Have you ever wondered why your renders take so long to complete? Often, small adjustments in Blender can have a massive impact on your render performance. And one of the most underrated settings is tile size. It's surprising how many people are unaware of certain settings or don't know how to use them correctly. And this is where tile size plays a crucial role. Although it seems like a simple parameter, an incorrect configuration can completely ruin your render times. Today, we're going to break down everything you need to know about tile size. We'll see what it is, how it works, and most importantly, how to set it up so you don't waste time waiting for your renders to finish. Stay with me because we're starting now. First, let's talk about what tile size is. Simply put, tile size refers to the size of the blocks into which the image is divided during the rendering process. If you've ever wondered how rendering works this way, it's through tile size. These blocks or tiles are rendered independently, allowing the rendering engine to process the image in smaller sections. This is especially useful in complex scenes as it allows for more efficient use of the processor or GPU and RAM or VRAM respectively, depending on which component we're using to render. There used to be a clear distinction between which tile size to use depending on whether we were rendering with the CPU or GPU, but since Blender 3.0, this is no longer the case, and I can say they behave quite similarly. So it no longer matters much to optimize tile size depending on the rendering device. But what happens if we don't set the tile size correctly? That's where problems begin. Let's break down the main problems. Put simply, your GPU is limited by the amount of VRAM it has, and your CPU is limited by the RAM it has. If your scene doesn't fit in your VRAM or RAM, then your scene won't render. In this case, you need to reduce the tile size because the current value is probably too large. On the other hand, if you reduce the tile size too much, you'll lose a lot of performance because you won't be maximizing the power of your components. Let's look at some practical examples. Here we have a complex scene rendered with different tile sizes. These are the times we get for CPU rendering. We can see that when the tile size is very small, the render time starts to increase. When we approach a midpoint, which in this case is 512, we get the best performance. For GPU rendering, we get similar results. Smaller tile sizes greatly increase render time. In this case, we see that the negative impact is much greater than with the CPU. As we approach a size of 512, performance improves. Like the CPU render results, the best time is achieved with this tile size. But as we see, the pattern repeats. Render time starts to increase with very low tile values. Let's look at other tests I did, this time with an Apple chip, where we'll see that the behavior of the CPU and GPU repeats. Finally, I did another test with a different scene and more updated components. Here we can see that the rule repeats. Smaller tile sizes result in poorer performance for both CPU and GPU. However, here we do find a difference. For the CPU render test, we see that once again, a value of 512 gives us the best performance, though by a very small margin. But in the GPU render, performance starts to decline as the tile size decreases. So while the 512 value gives us the best performance in previous tests, it's not always the case. As I mentioned earlier, the behavior of the CPU and GPU changed in Blender from version 3.0. Previously, configurations like these were recommended because they used to work. But now, the rendering devices function almost the same. So, how can you make sure you're using the right tile size for your renders? First, it's essential to test different tile sizes with your specific hardware, keeping in mind that very low values will make you lose performance. Every system is unique, and what works for one may not be optimal for another. Second, start with a medium tile size, like 512, compare it with the default value of 2048, and adjust based on the results you get. Finally, if you see that with the default tile size your render doesn't start or takes too long to start, you should reduce the tile size, which will allow you to manage your computer's resources better. Finding the optimal tile size can take some time and testing, but the results are worth it. Just like tile size, there are many other parameters crucial for rendering. Among the most important are the number of samples and the noise threshold. If you want to know how they work and how you should use them, you can check out the videos I've made on the subject, which are appearing on the screen right now. I hope this information has been helpful. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to not miss any content.